Not even St. Charles County is safe from radioactive waste sites in the greater St. Louis area. Better be careful if you're wanting to settle down in this area. You might get cancer, or even worse, your kids might become mutated. Outside of the paranoia of the Weldon Spring Superfund site, the city of Weldon Spring, Missouri is a very wealthy one, and a nice one, and we can get into all of that later in the video. Weldon Spring is a St. Louis suburb that's located about 30 miles west from downtown. It's off of the Missouri River and there are several parks along the bluffs of the river, and the Katy Trail, which is a walk and bike path, parallels the north side of the Missouri River through the area, so that's all good and dandy. But we'll be checking out the city in the later half of the video because the Superfund site is where we start the video as it lies anywhere from 3 to 5 miles west from where most of the people live in Weldon Spring. Explore the Weldon Spring site. Today this is a park with some hiking and biking trails. This place is the site of some radioactive waste. The Weldon Spring site was where the Weldon Spring Ordnance Works once made explosive materials for the nation's arsenal of democracy. The arsenal of democracy was a term that was coined by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. On December 29, 1940, Roosevelt announced the plan to support the country's allies in Britain by supplying them with weapons, planes, trucks, ships, tanks, and other forms of artillery, stating that a victory by Germany over Britain would be detrimental to our safety in the United States while a victory by Britain would save Americans from seeing war in our own country's land. And go all the way to the top of the mound, where below the mound is the radioactive waste. Am I developing cancer, breathing the air around here? By 1941, the U.S. Army purchased 17,000 acres of land, including the land that this giant rock mound sits on today. There were three towns that were demolished among the purchase, those towns being Hamburg, Howell, and Tunerville. After clearing out the land, a factory was constructed here to produce TNT and DNT in order to supply Britain during World War II. The Weldon Spring Ordnance Works was operated by the Atlas Powder Company, and the site employed more than 5,000 workers while containing over 1,000 buildings. On August 15, 1945, the Japanese surrendered and the plant at Weldon Spring stopped production after producing more than 700 million pounds of TNT. After production of TNT ceased, the Army then started to sell off the 17,000 acres of land. The state of Missouri purchased 7,000 acres while the University of Missouri bought 8,000 acres. The remaining 2,000 acres of land was kept by the United States Atomic Energy Commission, who ended up building a uranium ore processing plant on the site in 1955. The official name was the Weldon Spring Uranium Feed Mill Plant, which was operated, of course, by the infamous Mallinckrodt Chemical Works of St. Louis. At the Weldon Spring site, the plant processed raw uranium ore into concentrated ore, or yellow cake, as they called it, which was then shipped to other sites. Uranium ore is a naturally occurring radioactive element found in the Earth's crust that has been used for multiple things over the years, including helping to make the first atomic bomb and nuclear reactors for electricity production. When uranium decays, it turns into radium, which then decays into a radioactive gas called radon. Over time, it's been discovered that long-term exposure to uranium ore can cause adverse health effects ranging from renal failure and diminished bone growth to damage to the DNA, as uranium ore possesses both chemical toxicity and radioactivity. It's really not a steep climb at all, if you're wondering. Most people should be able to do this. The Weldon Spring site was also proposed by the U.S. government to be used to produce Agent Orange, which was a herbicide that was used during the Vietnam War to clear vegetation in the thick jungles of Vietnam. It would be sprayed from helicopters over the land in Vietnam, damaging the environment along with human health greatly. The chemical is blamed for making 2 million people sick, along with causing 300,000 deaths among Vietnam veterans. However, the Army ended up abandoning the plant, and Agent Orange was never produced here. The plant then sat vacant for 20 years, with toxic lagoons collecting the remaining radioactive chemicals and toxic metals.
It wasn't until the 1980s when the U.S. Department of Energy started to clean up the site. The large rock mound that we see here today was completed in 2001, and beneath it is one and a half million cubic yards of hazardous material. With that said, they say that it's safe to visit. Along with a hike to the top of the mound, there's even a hike and bike path that runs through. Lastly, there's an interpretive center that explains the history. Today, the Weldon Spring site continues to be monitored by the EPA for groundwater contamination as the groundwater has continued to be toxic. Oh man, I am being watched. As I've covered in other videos, the Greater St. Louis area has its fair share of radioactive Superfund sites thanks to the Mallinckrodt Chemical Company and the U.S. government. Two of those sites are the Coldwater Creek Superfund site and the Westlake Landfill Superfund site. Both of those sites had excessive amounts of uranium ore just as the Weldon Springs site did. Both of those sites are about 17 miles northeast of the Weldon Springs site, and for more information on that, make sure to check out my video on the abandoned Carrollton neighborhood, which is a part of the city of Bridgeton. That video can be found in my St. Louis suburbs playlist, and the link for that is down below. Well, now it's time to head on out of here. There's actually a high school located right outside of the Weldon Springs Superfund site, that being Francis Howell High School, located right where the town of Howell used to be. That was, of course, before it was evacuated by the purchase of the land for the U.S. Army between 1940 and 1941. After the evacuation, Army barracks were constructed on the site of where the high school sits today. Those barracks were still standing up until 1991, as the high school used those buildings until they were demolished around that time. The athletic teams at Francis Howell go by the Vikings, and among the most notable alumni includes pro soccer goalkeeper Patrick Schulte, NFL fullback Sutton Smith, and NFL linebacker Calvin Munson. Since Weldon Spring is a smaller, yet very spread out suburb, I'll be skipping the footage ahead to where we're driving through a more populated area. If you wish to see all of the driving footage that I captured of Weldon Spring, you can find the footage that I captured on a separate video that will be uploaded on my second channel, and the link for that will be down below. Over the years, the city of St. Louis has continued to shrink in population while the suburbs have continued to expand outward at a rapid rate. Weldon Spring is in St. Charles County, which is the wealthiest county in all of Missouri. Here you can see a graph of the population growth within St. Charles County over time, and the growth probably won't end anytime soon. Weldon Spring is named after some of the first settlers to the area, that being John and Joseph Weldon. Weldon Spring officially incorporated as a city in 1984, and today, it's just like most other suburbs in St. Charles County. The population today is estimated to be 5,300, and the median household income is $131,000 per year. 54% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $423,000, while the poverty rate is 1%. When it comes to the crime rates, Weldon Spring is a very safe community, as both the violent and property crime rates are below average. Niche.com rates the public schools as an A-, and Area Vibes gives Weldon Spring an overall livability score of 84 out of 100, giving high ratings in crime, employment, and schools, with the worst factor being the high cost of living. There's really not much to see off of this main highway, which is basically just a commuter route for all of the residential subdivisions within Weldon Spring. Up ahead, I turn off of Highway 94 and I drive through some of the more upscale residential areas that are hidden off of the main route. Lastly, when it comes to the groundwater contamination of the radioactive waste from the Weldon Spring Superfund site, officials say that it's safe to live in the city of Weldon Spring. However, there's some residents of a separate community just northwest of here, that being Darden Prairie, who have often questioned the quality of their drinking water over the years. Back in 2001, when officials completed the cleanup process by finishing the rock dome over the Weldon Springs site, there was an unusually high rate of deaths among newborn babies in both Weldon Spring and Darden Prairie. That was only the case for a two-year time span, however, and overall, the data for Weldon Spring and Darden Prairie doesn't show that there's a higher rate of cancer among the people who have lived here for a long time. 
and that's not the same story for the cities of Bridgeton, Hazelwood, and Florissant, 17 miles northeast of here, where those communities have been exposed to radioactive waste more so through the West Lake Landfill and Coldwater Creek Superfund sites. So the chances are that you can live in either Weldon Spring or Darden Prairie and be safe from the toxic groundwater. Here you have some more public schools, both a middle school and an elementary school. However, Weldon Spring might be a small city in terms of population, but it's very spread out. And I drove around Weldon Spring for about 40 minutes total. And if you want to see more of the area, make sure to check out my separate video on Weldon Spring, which will be more so about seeing what the entire area looks like. That upload will be on my second channel, and the link for that is down below. With that said, I do end the video here. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes, so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my St. Louis Suburbs playlist or in my Missouri playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. 
We'll see you next time. Peace.